Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you've drunk with us today. <laughs> Please leave. <laughs> Thank you. So um, for those of you who do not know me, my name is Egan Bachinon. So I'm a medical doctor, and I want to tell you the story of how I became a comedian, merging the worlds of medicine and creativity. Where do I start from? So I was short-sighted as a kid, and um, I had no idea. So I was one of those children that would sit in front of the TV, and they would say, come back. Why are you sitting too close to the TV? And the discipline method of our parents then was either a slap or cane or something to reset your OS. And it happened many times, but I kept sitting close to the TV. It happened for as long as 12 years. Until one day, my father decided, I think it's time to take him to a hospital. And I come from a lower to middle income family, so we could not afford a proper optician. For those of you who grew up in Lagos, you know, there's a place at Lagos Island where they can give you glasses. Yeah. So we went there. And when I came out, my vision was a lot better. See, for those of you who have eyesight, you should thank God. And I came out, and the world was beautiful again. <laughs> I could see. I read all the billboards, criticized everything, because I was not seeing them before. <laughs> oh, so that's what this billboard was saying. And fast forward to secondary school, I couldn't fit in. I used to, or rather, I regard myself as someone who's creative. I'm an actor, I'm a singer, I'm a comedian, I'm a writer, I'm a storyteller. And I'm also a medical doctor. And in secondary school, we had asked where I should join. I'm the kind of person who I was in every single department. I was in choir, I was in the drama club, I was in a debate group, I was everywhere. I don't know if you are that kind of person, please let me know. I was everywhere, I was everywhere and everything. And because of that, I couldn't fit in. When it came to the choir, it was difficult to get me to stick to a particular part. So the way the choir is arranged in secondary school, and probably still now, it's the treble and soprano sit in front, the alto behind, tenor, and then a bass. And every day you come to the choir, I was in a different position. So today I'm singing treble, and while the harmony of the song is going on, I hear something beautiful. And I wonder where is it coming from? It's coming from the tenor people. Then I switch immediately to tenor. And the people who are in treble get confused, and they kick me back to tenor. Fast forward to me getting Admission into university. The next slide. So yeah, that's me. <laughs> that's me in university with a slight twist to music. So I sang a couple of songs, and that was my album cover. One mic. You would never hear those songs. <laughs> But then it gives you an idea into the kind of person I am. And for most of my life, I was confused, up until I came into clinical classes. And we were opportune to get involved in patient care. And in 400 level, I came to take what is called history from a particular patient. It was a 79-year-old man. I would never forget him, because my experience with him gave birth to what you're seeing today. And he had hypertension and a complication of it, which is a stroke. But his stroke was minor, was transient. And the doctor told him, this is what you need to do to prevent the next stroke from coming on, because the next stroke is usually worse than the first. And I left, and we left, and it was fine. 
Three years later, I came back to write my final exams, and here was the same man in the ward, this time with another stroke that took his life. And it got me thinking, what exactly did he miss? Was it that he could not understand the doctor? Was it that the doctor could not pass across the message in ways that he wasn't able to understand? And it took me to researching and trying to find out what exactly are the habits of people out there. Because many times we suffer, we suffer from something called a curse of knowledge. So if something is clear to you, it's harder to understand why it's not clear to others. And what occurs to you is, how come they know something as simple as this? When I hear the crypto bros talk, I'm like, yeah, you have no idea how much you're blessed because I don't understand what's going on. <laughs> so, it got me thinking, and I began to ask myself questions. Remember that before then, I regard myself as someone who was creative and confused. And so I decided to get into radio to spread across the message of healthcare as a student. And I applied at the biggest radio station in Newe at that particular point in time, three times. And those three times, I was told I was not good enough. But it didn't stop me. And so I stood in front of my mirror and practiced and practiced and practiced. And for hours, I would just talk about random things on my TV, trying to ensure that the message of healthcare was passed. And that's why I'm also talking about, please, next slide. And that's why I'm also talking about this, which is practice and improve. Many times, we also need to understand that your what next actually starts now. Sometimes we think of what next in the future, but no, it actually starts now. Because of my practice and practice and practice and improving myself, I could tweak my message in such a way that it was not that it was better accepted by people. Why is there a fly flying across my face by, <laughs> by 3.40? <laughs> I hope the idea is not, they're not okay. <laughs> and I decided to plunge in. And because of that, I understood one thing, that people, excuse me, <laughs> that people spent a lot of time on their phones, their mobile phones. I'm sure if you're asked how long do you spend on your mobile phones, many of you spend close to six hours every day on that phone. And whether you like it or not, it actually helps to inform your habits. Your habits are built by the things you expose yourself to daily. And I asked myself, how can I, as a medical doctor, pass across these messages in a way that people would accept easily. And it was through their phones. I had tried through the traditional media, and I was told I wasn't good enough. And I decided to use the mobile phones. And I went into Instagram and Facebook and created conversations. But I was talking like the actual doctor. I was talking like, Madam, you have stroke. And because of this, 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 this is going to happen. And no one was listening. I did this for five years, and no one paid attention until I decided to switch into storytelling. Because of my training as a medical doctor, it's almost as if you are told, keep your creativity aside and follow these laid down rules and regulations. Why were we told to do that? Because every time you're in front of a patient, a life is at stake. So that's not the time to, you know, want to change the game, or build things, or twist the narrative to be able to suit some people or not. No. It is either this or this. But I also realized that I needed to be creative. Because the World Organization, the Nigerian Medical Association, and a lot of medical associations out there have been speaking, but people were not listening. How do I know people were not listening? The incidences of um, non-communicable diseases in Nigeria is at an all-time high of 24%. Of course, we still have the burden of communicable diseases to deal with. And people are dying. 
but the organizations, the medical organizations, are not speaking in the language that people can accept. And so I decided to become everything to every people so that by at least, by some means, I might save some. The fellowship pastors in school understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> the message from Paul to the Christians. And I became an actor. I created a um, couple of series called the Okirikiri series. How many of you have seen that? Where I'm a Dibia with a chalk around my face, acting and making people laugh. But while they are laughing, one thing is paramount, is that they know that they are not just laughing, they are better informed about their health. And I decided to use the principle of taking medicines when we were young. So most times when we were young, our parents would give us drugs and would refuse vehemently that we're not taking them. But then my mother found a better way to give me drugs. She would wrap it in a bar and give it to me. <laughs> and I would swallow it without knowing that I had taken drugs. Was it effective? Yes. And so we designed the message, or rather, I designed the message in such a way that people would not know that I was talking about medicine or I was talking about health. Because how many of you have, without you needing health care, gone to a radio station or gone to a TV station and you're looking for a health, health talk? Somebody hissed. <laughs> I'm sure some of you are like, wait till, wait till carry my leg, go radio station, go to find health talk. And that's because you really don't need it, in quotes, or you don't think you need it. But your health is an important aspect of your life. And so, going into social media, going into um, create, creative storytelling, I decided to be these things and coin the message in a way that people would accept. Because I knew my competition were not the hospitals. My competition was your attention. I was competing for your attention against people like, you know, the Mr. Macaronis and the skit makers and the basket mouths and the rest of them. I needed you to understand what I was actually trying to say was important for you. And so we told stories. And in the process of telling stories, we've created one of the biggest health channels in Africa, I dare say. It has not been an easy feat, but it's a new way to tell stories. And that's why I'm saying that there are new ways to look at old problems. Nigeria has one of the worst health indices in the world. We are currently three numbers away from the worst, poorest, worst health care industry in the world. We currently have one of the most overburdened doctors anywhere in the world. And so, you, in my own opinion, I decided to play my own part in making sure that people live healthy lives. Not by doing it the traditional way, but by finding a creative way. And so I'm going to end with this, my last slide. Just jump to the last slide. I'm not going to bore you all this. The things we say are never new. They have either been said or written. What we are doing is simply echoing them till they find expression. Thank you. <laughs>